Now I would like to invite Tariq Suleimani, data scientist lead from Petroleum Development Oman, to present his topic on the AI economy. Uh, so thanks for having me here. And as introduced, uh, I lead the data science in PDO. And while we are developing the AI of tomorrow, I have been always curious on how AI is going to impact us as individuals, as team, as organizations, as society, and as a nation by itself. Which brings me to today's topic, the AI economy. So as economy by itself, most of us are aware about. It is the foundational pillar of work, wealth, and welfare. However, we don't know that much about AI. So that's why today I'm going to focus on how AI is ending up impacting us and what we can learn from the past, what we need to do to be careful of, and some recommendations and pointers on what we can do. <clears throat> so, of all technological advance, artificial intelligence has seen as one of the greatest hype in the market. And it is a technology that doesn't require to be marketed by itself. We can market it left, right, and center. And for all of who believes on the hypes, we know that at one point or another, AI is going to replace our jobs. So, Raise your hand if you believe that AI is going to replace our jobs in 2030. Okay, so you don't believe on that. <laughs> All right. So there is an interesting article uh, based on singularity, as it was mentioned uh, in the panel discussion. It states that, or try to predict that, smart machines would surpass the human brain in 2025. And it was mentioned there also, smarter machines will surpass all the human's thinking capacity by 2050. So isn't that amazing that the computational power that we have, it's, it has the capability of having the human thinking capacity. It is amazing, but it is also scary. So there is another survey that was conducted by Chapman University in 2015. And the result was people were way more afraid of losing their jobs to robots than they were actually afraid of dying. Interesting. So, to learn from the past, or as an economy, from the economy, we know that to learn, to predict the future, we need to learn from the past. And let's do this small exercise to understand how we can learn from the past or what the past taught us so we can understand the impact of AI to our economy in the future. We know that there have been three industrial revolution in the past and we are now currently in the fourth one. So let's know more about all the three and what they are all about. 
So let's start with the first industrial revolution, which was the steam engine. It was a good enabler for our society and civilization. It's an amazing that it's enabled us to move from point A to point B faster. We are no longer needed anymore. We can carry tons instead of kilograms. And then we have the second industrial revolution where we have the electricity. The sunlight is no longer the only source of the light. We have also the electricity that is granted us the visibility at night. And there was also the introduction of the telephone where you can communicate from one place to another place without having the physical requirement to move from point A to point B. Amazing efficiency. Imagine that you can call home now and ask your wife to prepare your food without even having to send somebody to do so. And then we have the computers. With computers, we are able to store, retrieve, archive digital bits. And with the internet, we can learn from all around the world without even having to step out of our offices. And currently, we are in the fourth industrial revolution where we have the AI, where we have the AI chip and where the AI is changing our way in the communication, where the AI is changing our way on socialize and doing business and everything that we can do. And for most of us who believe that tomorrow is going to change, and it is a matter of an advanced technology that is going to hit the market and it will take our jobs. So let us go back to the history again and see that all of these industrial revolution, as you can see, they didn't happen in a, a one day or in a single day. It actually took 10 years for the steam engine from the day it was invented until it gets industrialized. The electricity that we have it everywhere in our home, it is actually started from the lab. And computers, believe it or not, the device that in your pocket right now is more powerful than the computer took the humanity to the moon. And for the AI, it is exactly the same. It is us how we craft it, and it is us how we can adapt with it. So for Oman, or as Omani, we don't have to reinvent all the industrial revolution. The most important thing is how we can get the best out of it, how we can utilize it to make us ahead in economy, in wealth, and in industry. And let's also admit that the industrial revolution passed us. So for the fourth industrial revolution, it is going to be exactly the same as we had seen. So if there is a lesson that we have to take, we should know that AI is a process. AI is not a dramatic event. It is going to happen and let us not just wait for Tesla 
to bring their robot and we don't have jobs. It is us, how we adapted. It is the adaptation actually and the industrialization is going to take decades, decades in such technology. So it is us on how we adapt and how we get the best out of it. So this guy is Benjamin Franklin and he is the founding father of the United States. This guy said an interesting thing that I see a future that we are moving towards that we only are required to work four hours a week. Four hours a week? Interesting. If you are looking for the current situation, the amount that you are going to get paid out of these four hours, it will not bring the bread in your table. But he has seen something. And I believe it is the AI and the impact of the AI to the economy, where we have 90% of our work can be done by the, or our technical work that can be done by the AI itself. And we left with the four hours where we can have the soft skills like leadership and innovation and etc. So let me tell you some of the examples that how it's going to end up if we don't be careful about AI. And before that, let me explain to you the GDP per capita, which is a very important equation that is affect the economy itself. So GDP per capita, if most of you are aware about, it is the country GDP divided by the total population or by its population. And if you can see here, the total population is a very important variable that we have in this equation. The change on that variable either can take us to a sustainable AI economy or it can take us to the edge of the disaster. And as most of us are aware, recently, Canada is opening the borders for hundreds of thousands of immigrants. And why is that? To fill the gaps left by its aging workforce. And this is actually remind me about what happened in 2000 in China. In China in 2000, when the global removed all the restriction, China get introduced to the world. And China came with a very special talent called cheap labor. And after a few years from there, in 2008, economic crisis. And why is that? Because the amount or the amount that they get paid, they used to get paid, and the spending power and the generation, the worth generation actually suddenly get changed with a single variable that is cheaper than what they used to put on the table. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a, if we are not going to watch it very carefully, then we will allow AI and robots to become similar to a cheap labor. And because of that, we need to be careful 
and I will leave you with some of the pointers that we need to focus on. So as a government, the government should be able to have a law in fighting inequality and promoting sustainable AI economy. So the introduction of AI shouldn't be individual. The government should have hands on it. And for example, as a company, if I am capable to bring 20,000 robots, I shouldn't be allowed to have it at one time. The government should have to have hands on it. Or they can introduce the robots tax. Because robots are going to take most of the investment that has been done on the employment for the past year. The other thing that we need the government to step in. For example, we reach at moment where we have self-driven car. And la samahallah, imagine that if the car hits somebody or if the car hits something, who is to blame? Is it the car owner? Is it the car manufacturer or someone else? And on the other hand, we have also to focus on the education. We have to frame our education system. Our current education system is not fulfilled for the future we have. So while we are learning from the organization on leadership, on some uh, skills like innovation and engagement, we have also to focus on what we call it STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And why is that? Because if our graduates are not capable in these four arena, we are going to be challenged in the future scale. So with these ladies and gentlemen, with the smart regulation, with the better policy, with the robust legal framework, and with the, with the reframing our education system, we are going to have sustainable AI economy. That's all what I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tara.